Hello, cookbook friends. This is Carrie from Cookbook Divas, and I went to my library today thinking I was picking up two or three cookbooks. And apparently, today I was picking up about 35. So our uh, King County Library system here in the suburbs of Seattle has had, you know, with coronavirus pandemic, a hard time getting books back and forth and staff issues, etc. So normally I would just ask for 45 cookbooks and I would get three or four or five or six a week and deal with it. Fun and send them back as soon as I can so other people can enjoy them. Apparently the hold system caught up and I have tons of cookbooks. So I'm going to do a little preview of each one, just a little, little short to show you what's coming up in the next couple weeks of Cookbook Divas as I go through all these stacks and stacks and stacks of books, which I'm looking forward to. And I'll be reviewing and previewing them over on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest. So let's get started. This is the Feast of Fiction Kitchen, recipes inspired by TV, movies, games, and books. This came out in or mid-2020. I've been looking forward to checking this out, and not just from the library, I mean looking at it in person. Oh, she's putting a pie in her, her co-host's face. <laughs> Breakfast, drinks, appetizers, and sides, savory pumpkin pastries, baking essentials, entrees, appetizers, desserts, butterscotch cinnamon pie. So let me see if I'm just going to show you a couple examples from every book so we don't have a lot of time. Here's how they start the dessert chapter. Butterscotch cinnamon pie. I love butterscotch pie. I'm allergic to cinnamon, so I wouldn't personally make that one. What else can we do? Dire Wolf shortbread inspired by Game of Thrones. Oh, I love Game of Thrones. What else do they... Oh, an entire spread of it. Oh, the Dire Wolves. Double glazed apple fritters inspired by regular show. I don't know what show that is. What else can we look at? Atomic pepper chili inspired by Dumb and Dumber. And let's do one more if I can find something fun. 8-bit uh, cake inspired by Minecraft. There it is. Cool. So that's the Feast of Fiction Kitchen, which I'll look through and review in the week or two to come. What's next? I didn't grab these in any order. They're kind of random. The Portable Feast. So I was on my library search, you know, website, searching for any book with the word feast in the title to see if it was a cookbook and what it was. And here's one of the things that came up. The Portable Feast by Jean Kelly, or Jeannie. It's creative meals for work and play, recipes for freshly packed lunches, breakfasts, and picnics. Fun. Okay. It's by Rizzoli. It came out in 2016, apparently. Here's how it starts off. Contents, breakfast, sandwiches and wraps, salads, bowls and soups, snacks and treats, picnics. Okay. I want to jump ahead to the picnic section. So I just randomly opened up to a brown rice bowl with collard slaw and miso, miso drizzle. That sounds good. Ooh, I saw a nice soup, goat cheese soup. Ooh, greens soup with Parmesan croutons. That's not greens, that's tomato. I think that's from a different page. No, that's the green soup, excuse me. I know how to look at books. Snacks and treats. Yum. Where's the picnic site? Whoa. There's some good looking things in here. Whoa. Oh, what is that? Well, you're going to have to wait to find out until I do the proper cookbook look through on YouTube later. Picnics. Okay. I don't. Oh, a Mediterranean picnic. Grilled lamb rib chops with fresh mint. Here's a spring picnic. This is going to be fun. I like this book. Here's a. Ajo or Ajo Blanco with nectarines. I don't usually use nectarines. I need to. So that's the Portable Feast. Hello for those of you that joined us. I just checked out 35 books from my library. Gonna have to review them and give them back because people need them. <gasps> Look at this beautiful cover. Sabrina Gayur Feasts and it's kind of metallic or shiny. Cool. Middle Eastern food to savor and share. I love Middle Eastern food. <gasps> Can't wait to see this. And I know I've reviewed one of her cookbooks recently. For those of you that just joined us, I checked out 35 books, cookbooks from my library today. Sabrina Gayer Feast. What else is going on here? Uh, say hello in the comments and let me know where you're watching from and what cookbooks you might be looking through this week yourself. Breakfast and brunch. Okay, let me just randomly find a good picture. Whoa! A cheddar and feta, feta <laughs> frittata. Yum. What else is here? Weekend breakfast. Whoa! Chicken, pistachio, and black pepper curry. Um, I'm really hot because it's 80 here in Seattle and we're not used to the hot weather yet. So if I'm a little sweaty, sorry. Spiced garlic, Savoy cabbage ribbons. 
I don't like cabbage, but I would eat them like that. Look at this beautiful tomato and olive salad. This is amazing. We're going to have a long look through this later. Nice. Next up, feast. Food of the Islamic world. This is going to be heavy to hold up on camera. Whoa! There's a lot going on here. What? There's so much. Festive Jordanian lamb in yogurt over a bed of rice and bread. Who's this by? Anissa Halu. Wow, this is incredible. Qatari shrimp risotto. Um, what else? Lentil palau. Let's find a really awesome picture. Oh, don't know what that is, but that's gorgeous. I cannot wait to look through this properly and do a whole cookbook review and look through with you. This looks good. Indonesian crab curry. Wow, these are incredible. That's very heavy. That was Feast Food of the Islamic World. And here's another book with feast in the title. Feasting, a new take on Jewish cooking by Amanda Rubin. Okay. It came out in 2019, apparently. Stay humble, eat like a king. Okay. Here's the contents. Starter, salads, main, sides, desserts. Okay. Canteen. I'm going to going to skip ahead and find a good picture to show you. Ooh, pretty. Huge pictures. Whoa, what's going on? I love it. Where's the recipe? Tahini dip and golden beetroot tahini. And golden chicken soup. <laughs> okay. Um, whoa, what's this? Grape, goat's cheese, and onion jam pizzette. Mm, my boyfriend's actually downstairs making pizza right now, but not from scratch. I should say baking pizza. Burrata with mixed tomatoes and basil oil. For those of you that just joined us, I'm looking through all the cookbooks I picked up from the library today. This is Feasting, a new take on Jewish cooking. And stay humble and eat. Oh, look at this eggplant tabbouleh. Yum. So let's move on to the next cookbook because I have a lot to go through. Here's another one with Feast in the title. I might have to make a shelfie, a cookbook shelfie of these. Feast. Generous vegetarian meals for any eater and every appetite by, I can't read it because the font is in red. Oh, Sarah Copeland. I do need glasses. Contents, breakfast and brunch, little meals, salads and sides, meals to share, sandwiches and tortillas, meals in a bowl, platefuls, meals to share, sweets, pickles, sauces, and such, and essentials for the vegetarian kitchen. I wasn't trying to just pick up lots of vegetarian cook cookbooks just because I am one. I want to get meat cookbooks for you guys, too. Country eggs and gravy with arugula. Oh, that looks good. Oh, there's so many good pictures. I don't know which one to show you. Um, How about... Oh, carrot soup with chives and popcorn? Do you ever put popcorn on top of your soup? That's kind of cool. Oh, okay. Let's look through one more fabulous one. Ooh, radish, enoki, tangerine, and avocado salad. That sounds really good right now because it's 82 degrees and really hot. So that was Feast. Next, another book with Feast in the title, and it's huge. Whew. Modern Middle Eastern Vegetarian by Greg and Lucy Maloof. This looks very well worn from my library, like a lot of people have checked it out. So that either means it's really awesome or it's been out for years. Not 2015. Whoa, it's very yellow. It's very heavy. Let's try and find the table of contents. Whoa, here they are. Okay. Breakfast, breads, butters and preserves, dips and spreads, soups, pickles and relishes, stuffed vegetables, fritters. A whole chapter on fritters. Haha, <laughs> love it. Savory pastries, raw vegetable salads, cooked vegetable salads, hot vegetable dishes, grains, rice, legumes, pasta and couscous, ices, desserts, sweet pastries, cakes and cookies. Okay, let me find some good pictures for you. Oh, here's one right away. Summer berry salad with ginger, lime, and labney. That sounds refreshing on a hot day like this. That's a dark picture I don't want to show you. Here's crushed broad beans, apparently with some kind of microgreens on top. And here's a lemony lentil soup with saffron scrambled eggs. Wait, you can put scrambled eggs in soup? I would try that. I love eggs. But I can see how some people would be like, mm. Vegetable frito misto in saffron yeast batter. And one more example. <gasps> Charred corn cobs with almond saffron butter. Oh, perfect for summer. That was New Feast. I still have about 15 more cookbooks to go through. This is not a cookbook. That is some trashy reading. I don't want you to know about it. Oh, this is going to make me very thirsty. Aperitif. I'm looking through about 20 more 
quickly cookbooks that I picked up from the library. So this is technically not a cookbook, it's a drink book, I know. But this one includes 100 recipes for drinks and snacks. So it is a cookbook. It's by Rebecca Pepler, and it came out in 2019. Cute, oh, I love this kind of little French bistro outdoor chairs. I need to go back to France, don't you? Cocktail hour, the French way. I might need to own this. Contents, warm, hot, cool, cold, aperitif shots, bites, and how to stock up. I don't need to stock up. I have lots of liquor in the house. Let's start with the drinks. Oh, there's a lot of stuff to read. I don't have time for that. Lots of stuff on how to equip your bar. Warm drinks for when the weather is just right. An example of that would be AM, PM, Sherry for one. Mmm, yum. And let's skip ahead to, oh, here's a rosé sour for one. I love that these are for one because my boyfriend doesn't drink cocktails. Vermouth olive. Ooh, this is pretty. Le sexe et le via. Bill. Lily rose, lemon juice, grenadine, and peychaud bitters. And did I say peychaud wrong? That's fine. Hot drinks for the most sweltering of days, like today. We're looking through a aperitif for those of you that just joined us. What is an example of a hot day? A Suze tonic involving Suze. Don't know what that is, so I'm going to skip ahead. A Mwati Mwati Parfait drink. Did I say that right? A St. Germain slushy. Yum, that sounds really good. Let's skip ahead to the actual recipes for the snacks. Oops, I stopped. A cider cider for one. I got hooked up. Okay, where's the food? Here we go. Oh, aperitif shots for when it's time to do shots. Like right now, because it's Friday night. Woo! What are you guys doing this weekend? It's a nice weekend, most of the country. Unless you're watching from somewhere outside of America, welcome. Bites for between sips. What's an example of that? Fromage fort, ratatouille dip. This is pretty cool. Cervelle de canoe, don't know what that is. Smaller bites, gougeres. I've made gougeres before, they're pretty forgiving. White beans and citron. Oh, that sounds good. That's aperitif. I will be looking through that in a video soon. And I'll probably be looking through it tonight and make myself a drink. But for now, I have a glass of white wine from Washington State. Yay! Mmm! Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, that's good. Okay. A Blissful Feast is the next book I want to look through. From my, I have about 15 cookbooks left to preview that I picked up from the library. Culinary Adventures in Italy's Piedmont. Marema, Marema, and La Marche, La Marche, by Teresa Lust. That's a great last name. This probably is not a cookbook. It's probably a memoir with recipes. Yes, Harvest Time at Listalata, other recipes. Yes, there's lots of recipes. So I will not be flipping through this on YouTube because there's nothing to look at, but I will probably be chatting about it on the Cookbook Divas podcast for those of you that like to listen to podcasts instead of or along with watching videos. Growing a Feast, the Chronicle of a Farm-to-Table Meal. This is another candidate for the podcast instead of flipping through because there's no pictures. It's by Kurt Timmermeister, author of Growing a Farmer. And what is this about? Uh, he spent years as a Seattle chef and restaurateur, although I never heard of him and I live in Seattle, but I don't go to that kind of fancy restaurants. I'd like to. He made a quiet transition into the business of small-scale farming. He started with a four-acre plot, plot of land on Vashon Island. And then he prepared weekly dinners from the farm's bounty, and here's how he did all that stuff. I think it's interesting to chat about. Okay, this next book is not a cookbook, but it's called Feast Your Eyes, and this lady has an incredible Instagram profile with the most beautiful food pictures ever. What? Let's see if I can find her Instagram name. Feast Your Eyes. Uh-oh. Brittany Wright. She's in San Diego. What is your Instagram name? This uh, book came out in 2018. Feast Your Eyes. Wait till I show you these pictures. She makes art with food. I don't want to give away, spoil a lot of the stuff in the book, but look how she lines things up by gradients and colors. It's really pretty. It's gorgeous. That is definitely food art. So this is not a cookbook. It's just inspirational. It makes me want to get out and harvest things and arrange my plates prettier. Oh, this is gorgeous. Okay, that's all I can show you for now. Beautiful. Next up, ooh, Dining at Dusk. And here in Seattle, it's finally warm enough to be outside after dusk. And we usually, knock on wood, don't have a lot of problems with mosquitoes. And I love eating outdoors. That is Evening Eats Tapas, Antipasti, Meze, Ceviche, and Aperitifs from Around the World by Stephen Paul. 
This came out January 2020-ish. Okay, let's check it out. The night is still young. Yes, it is. And it's Friday night. Looking forward to someone commenting. Yes, hi, Mina. Glad you're watching. This is fish salad. Okay, I'm vegetarian. I'm going to skip ahead. A Buddha bowl and a chicken noodle bowl. Gorgeous pictures. Here's a man pouring a drink after dusk. You see, this is stuffed vine leaves. Dolmatis. A sunset picture. Some bartenders. Some cities we can't travel to right now because of you know why. Focaccia and an Aperol spritz. I actually made an Aperol spritz last night, but I did not bake focaccia last night. I wish I had. This is cool. Obatsta, a cheese spread that I don't know how to pronounce. Pickled eggs. So I'll be doing more involved cookbook look-throughs and reviews on YouTube, and I'll post those videos to Instagram and Facebook as well when we have more time. Here's a giant cookbook. Move it. <sighs> I've been waiting to look through this. I had to wait on hold because all of the people in the Seattle library system wanted this book. The Pleasure of Good Food by Jody Williams. Forward by Mario Batali. This book is so well regarded and wins awards and everyone buys it. Jody Williams with Julia Tertian. And Julia Tertian is getting tons and tons and tons of press and reviews right now. Contents. Mornings, coffee and tea, afternoons. Jambon et fromage, aperitifs, evening sweets, and the larder, and a section on the self-taught cook. So let's jump in. Woo! Oofs, broils? Help! Help me with the French. Eggs, broiled? Broiled eggs. Asparagus melanese. That looks delicious. Ooh, there's so many good pictures. Ah, oh, I don't know what to show you. I can't show you the whole book. Here's afternoons. What, what do we eat in the afternoon? Oh, sandwiches. Yay! And with lots of cheese. A Pinzimonio? I'm going to learn a lot from looking through this one. Steamed artichokes. A little advice on hams, in case you need that. What else? Oh, marinated olives with orange zest and red chili. I wouldn't have thought to put red chili on there. That's cool. Let's jump to the dessert chapter because everyone likes dessert, but this is roasted heirloom apples filled with pork sausage. That's not a dessert. Can I find one? Sweets. Here we go. Sweets. Let me find a good picture. Yay! A tart tata. Yay, a tart. And roasted pears. And okay, so that is Bouvet. We have five more cookbooks left, and then I'm going to go off air, pick up the cookbooks I just threw on the floor accidentally. And here's one I'm really looking forward to. We're going to do a blog post about this one, a cookbook look through on video, and a podcast about it. The Little Library Cookbook 100 Recipes from Your Favorite Books by Kate Young. I am dying. I'm so excited because I'm a huge reading nerd. So I'll be doing lots and lots of coverage of this. Came out in 2018, but I just now this week heard of it. Ooh, book nerd, love it. So she gets inspired for the recipes by literature. And I love the way she, she sets up the chapters. Before noon, or around noon, afternoon, like tea time, the dinner table, and then midnight feasts and parties and celebrations. And then the last part is Christmas. So let's find some good pictures here. Here's a, the bell jar inspired a crab and avocado salad, apparently. And this is a thin pastry with spiced beef inspired by white teeth by Zadie Smith. I've never heard of it, but that doesn't mean it's not famous. I can't read everything. Whoa, what's this? This is meringues and iced coffee inspired by a room with a view. Here's a gorgeous picture of I don't know what. This is a thick book. I like this. There's... Uh, her book selections are all over the place, including modern and classic, and uh, a fine curry inspired by William Makepeace Thackeray's Vanity Fair. So that's going back in the day. Her Christmas chapter is, of course, inspired by Dickens. Here's Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire sausage rolls. This is awesome. We're going to do a long look through this in a video in the future. Next up, we have Drinking French. Oh, la, la. David... Leibovitz. This looks amazing. It's the iconic cocktails of Paris and something something of France. There's a library sticker over it. Came out March 2020. The iconic cocktails of Paris and cafe traditions of France with 160 recipes. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Are you? Here's a bartender shaking a drink. Yum. Cafe drinks, aperitifs, liqueurs and infusions, cocktails and apéro snacks. Let me find some good pictures for you as a preview. Ooh, a chocolate 
frappe. And how about, ooh, a champagne cocktail. And whoa, what's this? Les Découverte, which I think I'm displaying right now. Saint Sinner, Seat of Your Pants, The Ambassador. That's a drink I've been ordering at a local restaurant near me lately when we go out and sit on the patio. And Gin de Sapin and the Sapatini. Not sure what's happening. Chocolat, Lane Chien, a Cognac Alexander, Bourbon Banal Breeze, a Liaison, El Diablo, a Sink Cylinder. You get the drift. Wow. Awesome. I'm going to learn a lot of drinks from this. Fish and chips, please. That would be nice. Next up, a feast of serendib recipes from Sri Lanka. We have only looked through and written about one other Sri Lankan cookbook here at Cookbook Divas. So I'm looking forward to finding out what Mary Ann Mohanraj, Mohanraj has to say about Sri Lankan cooking. It came out in 2016, I think. Oh, 2020, excuse me. Illustrations, okay. Introduction, ethnic heritage and colonial influences, Sri Lankan meals, a few caveats, homesick, spices and ingredients. And then she goes into appetizers, short eats and snacks, eggs, poultry and meat, fish and seafood, vegetables, and accompaniments, and grains and drinks, and of course, sweets. So let's check it out. Oh. Okay, illustrations. Uh, chili mango cashews. Not the best photography in the world so far, and lots of little tiny pictures, mm, but that's okay. Ooh, look at these beautiful ribbon tea sandwiches with carrots and beets. That's gorgeous. And a goat mutton curry. There you go. Let's find a really good pic. These pictures are kind of small and outdated, but I'm very excited to have a Sri Lankan cookbook to look through, so I'm not ungrateful. Eggplant, potato, and pea pod porial. This looks really good, and it's vegetarian. Here's accompaniments, and this is mango pickles. Wow, I never thought of pickling mangoes. I guess you can pickle almost everything. Plain roti. I'd love to try making my own roti. So that's a feast of serendip, and that's Sri Lankan cookbook, and I have two or three left to show you. This one has a gorgeous cover. You can't see all of it because of the library sticker. What? Japanese vegan? Classic and modern vegan Japanese recipes to cook at home. Gorgeous. Let's check it out. I'm not vegan. I'm vegetarian. So I could cook these and add sour cream to them. Vegan Japanese. Okay, that's the title. Oh, it's pretty. I love the color scheme. Katie is going to love this when she looks through it too. Here's the introduction. And it's a... Okay, beautiful photos so far. I'm trying to find the table of contents. I'm not succeeding. Essential items, dashi rice, all the things you need to make your vegan food. Lots of, oh, beautiful photos. Wow. Okay. Dashi, deep roast sesame dressing, vegan Japanese mayo, ponzu. Oh, this is nice. Japanese curry roux, made vegan. Japanese curry roux with not katsu sauce, because it can't be. Small dishes and sides. I wish I could have found the table of contents easier earlier. Okay. Uh, let's flip through. I'll do a more... A detailed look through of this on YouTube later. Leek, pea, and potato croquettes. Yum! I love croquettes. Makazushi, big dishes chapter. What's a big dish? Ooh, beautiful photo. I can't wait to see this. Ramen for Fei Wong. Okay, that was our next to last cookbook. And finally, last but not least, Forage, Harvest, and Feast by Marie Viljohn. A Wild Inspired Cuisine. Wow. This came out in 2018. It says, no longer property of King County Library System. Well, I beg to differ because I just picked it up there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Forage Harvest Feast. Wild Inspired Cuisine. And there she is. Chelsea Green Publishing. Where's the table of contents? Um, Here it is. Ooh. Amaranth. American Burnweed. Bayberry. Black Cherry. Black Locust. Burdock. Cattail. Milkweed. Persimmon, pokeweed, ash, la la la, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. What do we do with these? Ooh, some really cool things. Fast mango and American burnweed salad. Wow. Okay. And how about, ooh, black cherry granita, malab kafudi, mugwort and black cherry roasted pork loin. Uh, not a lot of photos. There's several recipes here that have nothing. You know, I'm not a fan of that, but okay, that's fine. 
little tiny picture of cattail shoot pickles. <laughs> that sounds fun. I used to pick cattails. Common milkweed bud pizza with bacon and pickle turnips. This is going to be unusual. I will definitely look through this. Cockles with miso and garlic mustard. Uh, juniper and what you can do with it. Well, besides gin. Oh, lots of recipes that don't have a picture. And then we finally get a little ice cream, frozen yogurt picture. Okay. So that is Forage Harvest Feast of Wild Inspired Cuisine. And that is my cookbook look-throughs for today, all 30 or whatever of them. You will be seeing these again in our cookbook look-throughs on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. And then you'll be seeing reels where I flip through them quickly so you can see if you like them and want to buy them. Thanks for watching, and you can follow Cookbook Divas on our blog as well as all of the social media channels. Have a happy Friday night. Thank goodness for good weather. Bye!